Some swing states are seeing a decline in black voter turnout, which could put Democrats in a buying come November, as black voters are often key to turning purple states blue. Wisconsin is one of the states we're watching, where turnout in black majority wards has declined over the years. Another key state is Georgia, where ongoing voter suppression efforts could easily stifle black votes. The state passed a law just last year imposing new restrictions on absentee voting, reducing drop boxes, shrinking the window for early voting, and more. The CEO of the New Georgia Project, Nse Ufat, joins me now. Terrence Woodbury is also here. He is the CEO and founding partner at Hit Strategies. Okay, I want to dive in here. Um, full disclosure, we had a, I, I, I had to be, I happened to be chatting with each of you this week, and I was like, oh, we need to have this conversation on the show. Terrence, we know that black voters um, play a key role here. Explain, can you just lay that out with the data for us? That's right. Black voters are going to be more critical in this election than they even were in 2020. Pivotal. Joe Biden put together a coalition that, that was very different than the Clinton coalition, the Obama coalition, and frankly, Democrats are going to need a different coalition in 2022 than, Joe, than, than the coalition that propelled Joe Biden to victory. Joe Biden won with just 79 percent of black men's votes. Joe Biden won with just 83 percent of black votes. That's not going to be enough for Raphael Warnock for Stacey Abrams because Joe Biden was able to surge white seniors. He was able to, to do better than, uh, amongst white men. Well, frankly, I don't think Raphael Warnock is going to do better than Scranton Joe with white seniors. Well, I, th I think that's true. I would agree with you. So, Ensei, let's talk about this. I want your thoughts on voter suppression. Do you worry about how Georgia's new voting law will affect midterm turnout? You just heard these numbers uh, from Terrence. Absolutely. Uh, Senate Bill 202, uh, the bill that you referenced earlier, the law, actually, that you referenced earlier, changed over 50 of Georgia's laws. And so we've yet to see the impact of how these many changes are going to affect the voter experience. We're talking about cutting over 100 days from the absentee vote by mail timeline. As you've mentioned before, a cap of one drop box per county or one drop box per 100,000 voters. Um, you know, they've added five new crimes criminalizing a lot of the voter behavior, a lot of voter support activity um, that we see that helps encourage uh, participation, but also that helps uh, keep people's spirits high um, as they deal with and try to overcome voter suppression. I'm talking specifically about the water carriers uh, and faith leaders and, and Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts who, you know, hand out snacks to voters who are in five, six, seven hour lines. And so this will be the first election since the uh, since since Senate Bill 202 became a law and I'm deeply concerned about the impact that it's going to have not only on participation and voters experience but also the counting of the votes um, and this sort of transparency that we have in that process and the certification of the election. Terrence, we mentioned Wisconsin at the top of this and I'm wondering your take on how Democrats can get more black reach more black voters um, in a place like Wisconsin where black vote has declined over the last couple of years. It's going to be critical if Mandela Barnes wants to make it to the United States Senate and Governor Evers wants to keep his job. That's right, Simone. In transparency, Mandela Barnes is a client of Hit Strategies. We are helping him mobilize the black vote in Wisconsin and hopefully Hit Strategies can contribute to that effort. But, but that's exactly what I mean by a very different coalition than the coalition that propelled Joe Biden. Uh, Mandela Barnes is going to have to reach Obama level numbers with black voters, 94, 95, 96 percent. And that is going to require Democrats like Mandela to demonstrate the progress that has been made since 2020 before we make promises about what we'll do for the next two years, because frankly, they don't believe us. Oh. We have to demonstrate progress on the last two years. And today, 73 percent of black voters say that their lives have not improved since Democrats took control of Congress and since Joe Biden became president. In fact, I was in focus groups in, in Miami Day just last week, and four out of eight black men in that room told me that their lives were better when Donald Trump Oof. was president Oof. in Miami Dade. And so, folks like Val and folks like Mandela and Raphael Warnock and Stacey Abrams, we have work to do, but it's, it, it, we, we're off to a good start by nominating the most diverse slate of candidates 
uh, in Senate history. In Senate history. And say, before we go, I want to note that your organization has knocked on at least one million doors in order to get voters, specifically voters of color, out in Georgia. Do you think you've been successful in motivating black voters to participate in this year's midterms? And what are you thinking about turnout? Absolutely. I'm at, okay, so despite the attacks on the black electorate and the black vote, we're actually really encouraged by what we're seeing and the conversations that we're having. Um, one, we are witnessing, I think, a more sophisticated black electorate, right? And so, you know, moving from the analysis about the guy you'd want to have a beer to uh, or a beer with uh, to, you know, who can we elect to send to Washington, D.C.? Who can we send to the governor's mansion uh, to do our work? who has an agenda uh, for working families and for black families. I think that what we're also seeing is um, sort of a response. I know that this may not be a universal uh, uh, factor, but the attack on democracy, right, the sort of the Republicans' willingness to sacrifice democracy on the altar of racial superiority, on the altar of white supremacy, um, that black people of all ages are aware of that. And in, yeah. in a lot of ways, it feels like the battle for the future of Georgia and for the future of our country. And we're seeing black people who are ready to sign up. All right. And say, oof, Terrence Woodbury, you all will be back next month because we got to keep talking about this. Thank you for being here. And thank you for watching Simone on this Saturday.